big question. What's the proper way to make an STL? To make an STL, you have to set up your STL parameters before you export the file. Your file will live and die on these parameters. We're creating and checking STLs. Your part is ready to be exported. You have booleaned everything together. You have checked it for naked edges and checked it to see if it's a dirty file. When you export an STL, it is important that you don't export it too heavy. A lot of times when people export a file, they give it too fine of a setting and creates a very heavy megabyte type of file. Let me show you what I mean. In Rhino, to export our part, we pick it, we say export selected, and give it a name. We'll give this part A. Then we ask to export it as an STL, a stereolithographic file, which is what most machines use, and save. So now in Rhino we get a pop-up, and here it asks us for density, maximum angle, aspect ratio, edge length, and maximum edge length, maximum distance edge to surface, and min minimum initial grid quads. It's how you set this up that will determine how heavy this file is. What we're going to do now in file number A is we're going to create a very heavy file. So we're going to export this. And you'll notice how much time it's taking for the computer to do all the calculations in order to export this file. If I'm still talking and this is still calculating, this is way too long for a part like this ring. So that's one way of knowing, okay, something here is, is uh, not going right. So we're still waiting and waiting. And probably this is going to have something along a million vertices or plus. So what we're going to do now is we're going to export the same ring, only this time what would be considered normal, enough to get the job done and cleanly done. So we're going to call this part B. And we're going to save, only this time we're going to reduce the amount of edge to surface that we tell it to use. And we're going to go to 5 and say OK. So now, as, and it's already calculated. You can see the difference between the first time and the second time. What we're going to do is we're going to bring both of these rings into Rhino. And I'm going to show you a manual way of checking to see, is this file too heavy? First, we'll bring in file A. Now, I pick OK. And I am waiting and waiting and waiting while my CPU and my GPU are working to get all the mathematics done, get all those addresses called vertices stitched together in order to create the surface that is necessary to have an STL file. Okay, so it seems to be, there we go. So we're going to move this over. Okay, so even maneuvering it in your viewport is difficult when the file is too heavy. And now we're going to import the lighter file, which was B. And there it goes. All right, so what we're going to do now, we're going to turn it into a wireframe. And when you pull away, okay, you're going to notice even though we've pulled away fairly significantly in the viewport, you can still see through some of the lighter file that we did, file B. File A is still very, very dark. As you bring it close to you, if you can see through the vertices, and these are the wires that connect the vertices, well, here on top, you see it's still very dark. That is a heavy file. Okay, sometimes, depending on which machine you use, some machines will throw out information saying, this is too much for me. So you don't know what part of the information is going to throw out. It might be a part you need, or it will just plain tell you, this is too heavy, this cannot be done. So it is important that you create a nominal file enough to have the surface you need, so that way the part comes out nice and smooth. So if we turn off our wireframe display of the mesh, this is very good. You see, it's nice and smooth, round is round, flat is flat. The same thing here, only this 
is way too heavy. It's not good to export something like that into a machine. Okay, so a heavy file is one that has too much information. Correct. How do you feel about file checking programs like NetFab or Magix? I love them. You'll never know when you're going to export a naked edge or cold vertices or inverted vertices. So it always pays to check your file in one of these programs. It's imperative. It's the best way to go. The next thing we're going to do is once an STL is formed, we need to check it to see if we have any open edges like we did on our, on our object before. So that is usually done by putting it into another program such as Magix or NetFab. In Carrera Casting, we use NetFab. So we're going to take uh, B, open it up, and run a check on it. So we got lucky and everything is good, but you're going to see some highlighted parts here. I'm going to highlight the errors that might cause a problem. At this point, you will run an automatic repair, and this will repair those STLs. What's happening there is you might have vertices that are on top of each other or too many bunched together. It just cleans it up for you. Then you apply the repair and you export the STL and B and save and says yes I want to replace it and you're ready to go. In summary, we covered that too much information creates heavy files and it's advisable to use File correcting programs such as Magix or NetFab. Keep in mind this is just scraping the surface of this subject. If you have any questions, contact us at CarreraCasting.com and ask Tommy. Hi guys, thanks for watching. Please look for other videos in this series and learn how to perfect your trade. trade.